Amanda. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for taking some time every day to hang out with me. Today's video, we have the BoxyCharm Premium versus BoxyCharm Premium for October 2020. I will leave my BoxyCharm playlist to watch previous unboxings. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like. Let's get unboxing. BoxyCharm Premium is $35 a month. You get six to seven full-size items and each box retails for over $150. I have two BoxyCharm profiles. One is my true profile that caters more to makeup, and my second profile is double my age and is more skincare heavy. Let's see what the first box has in store for us. And this is what the inside looks like, and I can always tell which profile is which based off my choice item, and this box is based off of my profile number two, which is double my age and more skincare heavy. And this is variation 16. My choice item was the Casas Cool and Light Palette Powder Blush and Highlighter, and this retails for $34. Mine's the cream, but it says the powder. By the time I got the choice, all the powder ones were depleted. I think I added on two of the powder ones in add-ons. And the duo I got is High Intensity. This is what High Intensity looks like. Cream is very new to me. I know Millie over at Bad to the Brow loves cream products. I'm trying to learn a little bit of cream tips from her. So while I'm still a little intimidated by cream, this is completely gorgeous. And I hope that this is a great stepping stone. Those shades are gorgeous. I love how one shade is super dramatic and one shade is on the more neutral side. I think they complement each other very nice. I do have a sponge that I used for foundation, but I guess we can get an idea of how things blend out. At least that more intense shade blends out super nice, not as dramatic, but I love a dramatic blush. Blush is like my absolute fave. Definitely a little bit more excited for that. Also prior to choice, I have never really heard of Costas before. And then I saw them on Sephora's website and I know with Sephora's sale coming up soon, I kind of wanted to put a couple of items on my hearts just to try a little bit more from this brand based off of how this and my other item that I chose from Casas works out. The second item is from Fenty Beauty. This is the Brow MVP Ultra Fine Brow Pencil and Styler and it retails for $20. I have this and I absolutely love it. I definitely need a backup. I go through brow products like crazy. And I was very intrigued when this product first launched. Doesn't this have like that one side? I was very intrigued by this spoolie. And this is what the tip looks like. Very similar to the ABH Brow Wiz. And I'm pretty sure Dark Brown is a shade that I previously owned and it works out super nice for me and it's gonna sound weird that I do struggle trying to find some brow products because I feel like some shades are either way too light or they pull really warm and my brow hair definitely pulls a lot more cooler. Next by Laura Geller this is the 50 kisses lip blocking liquid color and it retails for $21. I just gotta say it just get off my chest but I feel like we are seeing so much Laura Geller and Siate Lunde in BoxyCharm lately. It's like the new Wander Beauty, which actually I get excited to see Wander Beauty these days, but I feel like ever since, what, May? <laughs> We've been seeing so much Laura Geller. I thought that they went bankrupt because you can't find their stuff no more at Ulta, but I guess all of their either excess, leftover, or whatever inventory that they have is at BoxyCharm. And nothing against Laura Geller. I like the brand, but I'm kind of just overseeing them. It's like overload at this point. I don't want to shit on them. Like I know I gave Wander Beauty such a hard time seeing them literally in every single box. And that's kind of like the resentment and reluctancy that I'm having towards Laura Geller these days. Which I almost sound like a hypocrite because I am using the crap out of this Balance and Brighten foundation. It was on my project pan. But dang, like I will probably cry if I see one of their products show up in one of my November boxes. But all in all, I do think that the shade Ruby Romance is so pretty. I don't think I have tried their liquid lipstick formula before, but I think we got like a gloss or a setting spray or mascara. I could be blurring the lines with Ipsy because I know Ipsy has quite a few of their products as well lately in their boxes. Next by Mirad, this is the hydrating toner and it retails for $35. Mirad's purple line is my absolute favorite. That is like the line that I found the most products that work out for me. Their AHA, BHA cleanser, their quenching ascent. I recently got their serum. I'm loving everything that I've tried from them. I know we have seen Mirad here and there in BoxyCharm. I think that's how I acquired the cleanser and the eye cream and then add ons, I was able to replenish the sense but that's okay because Mira is expensive so I'm definitely okay seeing them a little bit more and it's not like every single month I have not tried the toner yet I'm so excited oh it's like all over the place like I got like bubbles 
on me. It has a very intense dispenser. A lot of product comes out at once. It's like almost spraying yourself with the hose, but it's good because it's a toner and not a setting spray. I feel like with a lot of nozzle toners, not enough product comes out or it's super misty. Never feel like I have enough. So I end up wasting a cotton round and dispensing it on there and then putting it on. This I definitely think will get your whole face covered for sure. And even though I sprayed a lot, it doesn't seem like I really hit a dent at all. I only really use my Thayer's Witch Hazel for hydrating and to calm down my redness. Otherwise, my other toner that I use is to combat oil or it's for my dark marks. So with that in mind, I'm very excited to see how this incorporates in my skincare routine. Next by Illuminati Cosmetics. This is the Illuminati and Iza eyeshadow palette and this retails for $48. The only product from Illuminati that I have tried are their eyeliners. I have a hot pink and electric blue eyeliner from them. Super creamy, super nice. And this is what the inside of the palette looks like. Definitely feel like we have seen our fair share of pastel shades in 2020. You know we gotta do some swatches. 1996, Sour, Rai Rai, Purple Haze, Purple Dream. It is swatching very much so like the Morphe 35 Eye Palette, which I found their palette to be super chalky, really hard to build up on my medium skin tone. Azul, Baby Girl, Addy, June 1st, Rose. I think that row got a little bit better than the top row, but this is an interesting color story to say the least. Trust Izzy Rich Columbiana Soul. And this is what the palette looks like swatched. I do think that the pastels are a little lackluster, which is to be expected because I think pastel shades are going to be some that are super difficult to formulate. Kind of like how it is for a rich vampy lipstick to stay like this and not be patchy. Whereas pastels for it to really amplify, even with primer, I did struggle to make some pastel shades really pop. I haven't tried Illuminati's formula before on the eyes. So by these swatches, it's definitely my first impressions. We got a lot better with the swatches having a little bit more pigment all the way through does give me a little bit more high hopes that these shades are going to show up a little bit better, a little easier to blend, but I do think we're going to be here forever building and packing it on to really make them pop. I'm definitely nervous for Purple Dream to really show up. That is definitely a shade I would not apply with a brush. I would definitely resort to the finger method or even wetting it, and even then it seems to be very lackluster, but it's super pretty. It has a lavender icy blue shift to it. We'll see. I definitely have to play with this palette on my eyes and see, but I'm also struggling looking at this color story thinking what the hell am I gonna create I have pastels but then I have some other shades that may or may not really complement it I just feel like this palette is a little bit all over the place but I think that's also good in a way to really push you out of your comfort zone to get really creative on some looks and then the last product is by go to skin these are the exfoliating swipeys and it retails for $35 oh my gosh I am obsessed that these are called swipeys like swatches lippies oh I love that now we got swipeys I love products like these. I just added on some, I almost said fat fit fun, first aid beauty ones in like the smaller travel size. I am obsessed with those. And I think it was like almost 30 pads for about $4. I couldn't resist. And I got some from Face Story. I think the brand's called Wang Su. And I added some on in fat fit fun as well. I like to cut those in half because of how humongous those pads are. And then the fat fit fun ones that I call, I think they're by Dr. Nazif. Nazid, something like that. Costco was carrying them. I saw the asterisk and they're discontinuing them. So I was half tempted to stock up on it. And then I think I have some Elemis ones from my previous add-on as well. Needless to say, I get my fair share out of these swipeys. Oh, I'm gonna continue to use that term. So overall, I'm really happy with this variation. It's been a while since I've been like totally pumped for BoxyCharm. All the products really excite me with the exception of the palette and even Laura Geller to an extent. And after I swatched it, I was kind of like, okay, it is really pretty, but it's just the brand I'm just getting a little bit annoyed with seeing all the time. I have two new skincare items to incorporate in my routine, two that I have not tried before, and I'm always needing to 
toner and swipies. Stoked to have a backup brow pencil because I go through brow products so quickly. Excited to get out of my comfort zone and try cream blush. I do think that this lipstick is going to get a lot of use. I really love this liquid lipstick shade and I think it's going to pair well with the Ace Beauté lip liner that I got in my base box. We'll see how this palette goes. It's definitely one I need to try on the eyes and the color story is really going to push me to create some creative looks. Let's see what the second box has in store for us. This one is true to my profile and it's more makeup heavy. This is what the inside looks like and I think I got the same exact products except for my choice item and a different color Laura Geller lipstick. I am shocked to see that my profiles were the same. There's usually a little bit of a variation between the premium boxes. That's why I get two. Normally I only get one or two repeat products. So it was like the reverse this month. I got four repeat items as opposed to like the two. But it's okay because I'm working on two giveaways. One for November, one for December. So I will be giving away one of these Illuminati palettes. Just want to make sure that it's not busted. It's all intact. One of the toners and the swipies. I did get another Fenty brow pencil, but since not everyone is going to be the shade dark brown, I'm not going to add it in the giveaway. I am tempted to swatch this Laura Geller though. It is absolutely stunning. I know I just shat on Laura Geller, but it's a gorgeous hot pink and it has a blue undertone to it and those pinks I am just a sucker for. And this shade is Melon Crush. I don't think I'll be wearing this shade much during the fall and winter, but when spring comes around, hell yes. And then my choice item is the Casas Tinted Face Oil Foundation and it retails for $42. And I picked out the shade 5.5. There's like product all over the place. This shit is messy. And I think it's gonna be too light for me. It is super light. It definitely pulls a lot more yellow. It has a lot more coverage to it than I thought it would. So I am disappointed that the second profile did not have much of a variation to it. I know that there was like a clearance and maybe some other items. So I kind of would have expected to receive the different items in one box at least. I would love to know, do you guys get BoxyCharm Premium? Did you get the same items as me? I chose two different choice items and that usually does trigger different product variations amongst the boxes. And if you got that other variation, let me know what you got instead. And if you don't get BoxyCharm Premium, did you get a base box i would love to know what you got in your base box in the comments below and are you excited for november's box choice and add-ons just happened and i know i'm excited for it thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe before you leave and if you don't i appreciate your view anyways and i'll see you in the next video